look at how to manage the money supply and the financial stability of a country. You know, that's the role of the central bank. You don't want to have excessive inflation, so you want to have a stable uh, inflation, and you want to have financial stability, and that's the role of the central bank. Uh, however, in the context of Malaysia, the central bank takes a slightly more uh, bigger role that is developing the sector, i.e. developing the financial sector. Why is this happening? Partly because we are not a, a developed country, we are a developing country. So a developing country means that the central bank's role is much more than just being a regulator. So what the central bank did was, way back in 1983, is to enable Islamic banks to be established. So we started Islamic banking in 1983, and subsequently, as Islamic banks, more Islamic banks were established, then the issue arises is that to have sufficient, competent human capital to manage Islamic banks and later on Islamic insurance companies, fund management companies, investment banking, and so on. So then Central Bank took the role of establishing INSEAF, the International Center for Education in Islamic Finance, to provide that human capital, to provide that human capital initially for Malaysia and subsequently for the global industry. For the global industry. So as we take on the role from 2005 onwards, we have students coming from all over the world. We have students coming from African continents. Of course, right up to North Africa, and then we are from the GCC countries. We have from the Central Asian countries, including, of course, uh, from uh, Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, until America, Canada, and sprinkling one or two from South America. So, Islamic banking and Islamic finance has expanded over the years. If you look at the size of the assets of Islamic finance, it is still small as compared to the conventional, or what we call the total assets. Now it's about $2.5 trillion, it's still small. But the growth rate has been expanding. And if some of you may recall, in 2008, when we had the global financial crisis, there were many banks that failed. Okay, as you are quite familiar with that. Uh, then IMF, International Monetary Fund came up with a study, and that study said, showed that Islamic banks were less affected by the global financial crisis. I'm quoting only one study, IMF, because that's it's well, you know, a well-respected organization. I mean, if I quote academic studies, there were a lot of academic studies. People may say, well, that is an academician's work, but I'm quoting IMF studies. So, Islamic banks are less what we call it, susceptible to the financial crisis. And this is proven by a number of studies, including IMF. So the demand for Islamic finance has been increasing over the years in many countries. The latest addition of an Islamic bank is in Suriname, in South America. Last December, one bank was converted from a conventional bank into an Islamic bank in Suriname. Although Suriname is a small country, yet just to show you that the demand is there in many countries. So instead of taking the role of providing the human capital, we offer master's and PhD program. We do not offer undergraduate program, only master's and PhD program. Uh, so what we do is that apart from offering the graduate program, master's and PhD, we do have specialized programs, trainings, and so on, not only for bank executive, but also for board members. And we do training in Africa, in GCC countries, plus in Central Asia and so on. We do also training in here in Malaysia. Why in Malaysia? Because a lot of people want to learn Islamic finance in Malaysia. Uh, having training here, they will be able to meet up with the regulators, central bank, uh, capital market authority, what we call securities commission, and the market players. So Malaysia has a whole ecosystem of Islamic finance. 
And being a university under the central bank, our collection, the knowledge management center collection, specializes on Islamic finance. So we have a collection, both physical as well as online collection. So we have the best collection in the country. And, yet, and, and as you know, Islamic finance being a niche area, there are not many in literature. So this is where our people are working together with other institutions to enhance the collection further. So that's in a nutshell what we do, specializing in Islamic finance, Islamic banking, and the whole sector. And our faculty members specializes in a number of areas. One area which is quite popular to, or quite familiar to, to some is called suku. I'm not sure whether it is familiar to you, suku. Suku used to be a, a word that is, you know, uh, archaic or, or something um, foreign to many people. But if you have been reading economic magazine, suku has been used for the last 10 years in economics as a term. It's an Arabic term for the equivalent to bond. You know, when a com company or country issue bond, the equivalent in Islamic finance is called suku. suku. So, so we have specialists in suku where we have to structure the deals for both uh, corporations as well as for government. And then also we have specialists in in the remaining capital market, the fund equity side. For the fund equity side, we have index, Islamic index. Uh, we have Dow Jones, uh, we have FTSE index, the Financial Times Stock Exchange index, and so on. We have the FTSE uh, ESG Sharia index, the Environmental Social Governance index. And so, on. so we have that spectrum. We have the insurance side, we call it Takaful. And then we have uh, the microfinance. That's also another big area. And there are other areas such as, which is not equivalent or available in, in the Western literature, is what we call, and we're still using until today, the other big term called zakat and waka. Okay, zakat and waka. These are also used. Uh, we even in ISEF, we have just developed together with IBM a blockchain application on zakat. So we are also very advanced in the sense that we are using technology into our program as well. So again, let me welcome all of you. I know that you have a discussion with my colleagues. Okay, so, so this is what we are doing. Being a uh, uh, university under the central bank, we have to be cognizant of the development in the financial sector. And as you know, financial sector now is being overtaken by technology. Uh, you get less and less people being employed in the bank in human beings, and these are taken over by AI, artificial intelligence, and so on. Okay, so our role is also to keep to keep abreast with this development. So we are also incorporating all those changes into our program. Okay, as an example, a simple example, uh, for us as Muslims, when we select stocks in the stock exchange, be it in Europe, US, and so on, we have to ensure that those stocks meet the Sharia requirements. Now, with artificial intelligence, we are using AI to choose stocks based on those requirements. So we need not do it. We need not have humans to do it, but we set up the parameters and these are done through artificial intelligence. So these are examples of what we call robo-advisors and so on. So, so which means that being a university and a central bank, uh, we have a very close relationship <coughs> with the industry. Some of you may come from universities. Typically, in the university, Senate comprises of university professors. Right. In our Senate, three quarters are from the industry. CEOs, uh, central bank in our Senate. Only one quarter come from, the, from, in, from our professors. Why is this so? Because, again, we are very much industrial labor university. So everything must be close relationship between the industry and the so just, this is just to show how we work. So we are slightly different from the typical normal university. So it's very much industry -based. So again, uh, I thank you and welcome you to the Assalamualaikum.
Nazarullah as uh, the manager of Malaysian University <coughs> for this introduction of, of the KFC. Feel 
free to roam around uh, the campus and make yourself at home. Uh, there's also a booth set up by our marketing and ambition department just outside this room over, over there, so make, you, uh, make sure you drop by for a visit. So the restrooms are available near the stairs just outside the campus. Uh, and just let us know if you need any for their assistance. Uh, uh, help yourself for the good you like uh, uh, at your challenge now. Uh, and don't forget to send out the form. Mm -hmm.